When it comes to creating the very best hard floor care program, there are many challenges to overcome. And as you look at your own facility, the buildings you maintain, questions come to mind regarding processes, procedures, products you can use, and more. So to help us with this topic today, I welcome Andrew Wolf. He's a research chemist at Spartan Chemical Company. Andrew, welcome to Straight Talk. Thank you very much, Jeff. Happy to be here and looking forward to hopefully helping the audience in some way today. Absolutely. We're going to do that and have a good time as well. Um, it's a beautiful day and what a nice time to get together to talk about solutions for hard floor care programs. Let's start with this, Andrew. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been at, at Spartan? Sure. Jeff, I've been with Spartan. I'm in my sixth year. I started in 2017. And in my current role, as you kind of mentioned, I focus on the development of new hard floor care coatings. Um, there's some reformulation of products and formulas in there, as well as maintenance products and floor strippers. All right. So it sounds like you'll have some answers for us, especially when it comes to products. And that's what we want to know, what to use, how to use it. You ready to jump into our topic? Sure am. All right. My first question, Andrew, is actually, what are the most common questions you get about floor care? That's a great question. Um, one, of, one of the most basic questions that I get perhaps more frequently than you would think is, don't floor finishes create more maintenance? And that's actually not the case. So there's a perception that maybe by using a floor finish, you're going to be generating more work to keep it looking shiny. When in reality, floor finishes are designed to simplify floor maintenance. So I actually brought with me here, um, this is what's called a vinyl composition tile. And anybody in the industry is probably all too familiar with this flooring type. Um, it's found in healthcare facilities, schools, um, and industrial facilities. And what we have here on, on the left-hand side that I'm pointing to right now is just bare VCT. So when you zoom way in on uncoated VCT, on a microscopic level, what it looks like is actually a system of peaks and valleys, almost like a mountain range. And we call those the pores of the floor. Those pores will trap dirt and soils and pedestrian foot traffic will actually pound that into the floor when it's not coated. So as you can see in this tile, this has been coated with five coats of a floor finish. And what you do is you seal off the pores of the floor. At the same time, you create a gloss. So you're making your floor actually look nicer. And then you, en you enrich the color of the floor itself. So that's kind of the multifaceted benefit of using floor finishes. Okay, Andrew, that's cool. If I get the point, if you take away the pores of the floor, you you keep it clean, it's, you can add the shine to it and it stays nice and clean and shiny. Is that is that it? That's, ex that's exactly right. So you're simplifying maintenance routines. That's an easier surface to clean than having an uncoated floor. Another question that I get quite frequently is, on a new floor or a floor that's just been stripped, how many coats of floor finish should a user put down? Um, we have a simple rule. We just call it the rule of 100%. And all that is, is you take the percent solids of the finish that you're using and add it up until you get 100%. So a very common uh, non-volatile solids content of a floor finish is 25%. So 25 times four, you're at 100%. Now, I'm not in sales, so you don't necessarily need to take this with a grain of salt. If 100% is good, 150% is even better. And if we look at this tile again, the per coat thickness that you get with floor finish is very thin. It's about one fifth to one tenth the thickness of a human hair. So with having six coats down, you're building more protection and you're extending basically periodic maintenance, like top scrubbing and recoding and full strip outs. Okay, good information. Any other common questions? One other question that I get on occasion is, is floor finish slippery? Mm. So there's kind of this idea that because floor finish is shiny, the floor may look like it's wet and it may not be safe to walk on. Actually, all floor finishes in reality 
are tested via a standard called ASTM D2047. And this is the only standard in the industry that correlates actual pedestrian slips and falls with a laboratory measurement of friction of coated surfaces. So all floor finishes that are going to be on the market by a reputable manufacturer will have been tested for ASTM D2047. And in short, floor finishes actually make floors safer to walk on. They are not slippery. Yeah. I've heard that misconception many times or those questions about, you know, if it's got that beautiful shine, it's got to be maybe wet or slippery. And so good to hear it's not true. Um, Andrew, let's talk about common mistakes or misunderstandings that you encounter, you know, in your work as a chemist at Spartan. What are some of those? One very common one, and it's kind of going back to touching on the solids content of a floor finish. And that is solids content does not necessarily tell you about durability or how the product should be maintained. Solids content simply tells you basically per coat thickness. So the coat that actually stays and dries on the floor, the plastic polymers that go in there and make up that coating are what really matter. So that's where a lot of companies like Spartan really invest their R&D dollars is selection of those materials, making sure that they're safe, making sure that they meet, you know, is, is this product going to be used um, and burnished on a daily basis? Or is it meant to go down shiny, stay shiny with minimal burnishing? Uh, thinking about bigger picture of sustainability, what is your approach to that? Because I think that's a big part of floor care programs. Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, there's two ways to approach it. And one is on the manufacturing side of things. So that would be on companies like Spartan that are producing floor finishes, um, packing them out in certain containers. And then on the other side of it is how do we reduce the impact of basically the end user uh, maintaining the floor? How do we reduce chemistry and rinse slurries going down the drain? So on the manufacturing side of things, selection of greener ingredients. Um, Spartan has two products, Floor Front and Green Solutions Floor Seal and Finish that are Green Seal certified according to GS40. So that's basically a standard that has been created by Green Seal that indicates all of your materials going into the actual product um, are as low impact on the environment as possible. At the same time, you can select sustainable packaging that contains more recyclable plastics. And then by designing a product for the end user that requires less maintenance, less stripping, um, you know, you're plugging in burnishers less frequently using less energy to maintain the floor. And that holistic approach is really the modern way to address sustainability. You know, Andrew, when it comes to the sustainable information you just mentioned, I have to wonder, you talked about floor finishes. What about other hard floor care products? Does that fit into this? Great question, Jeff. So that standard, the Green Seal standard that I mentioned, GS40, that applies not only to floor finishes, but also floor strippers and then floor maintenance products, whether those are neutral floor cleaners. And then, of course, floor strippers are going to be on the alkaline side of things. But the selection of materials and ingredients that go into those products being low VOC and just having a lower impact on air quality um, are some of the qualifiers for, for meeting GS40. Good to know. I mean, that's something that the industry really is, is moving towards and is important to learn about. Andrew, I uh, noticed there's lots of floor finishes out there. Why so many choices? Well, Quite simply, it's because there's not a one size fits all policy in floor care. There's simply too many unique combinations of needs, of burnishing frequency, of expectations for the floor, um, budgets. So when you combine all of those factors, it's impossible to have one finish that does it all. And one way that we actually, Spartan, try to simplify this process is we have an app called the Sales Pro app that helps you narrow down some of your unique needs, um, your expected budget, and what you're basically expecting out of the floor finish. 
So your sales pro app sounds interesting. Who can use that? The sales pro app is uh, it basically available to our sales Spartan sales managers in combination with um, our authorized distributor representatives. And they can really work in conjunction with each other and the end users um, to make sure that the unique needs of one user or one facility are all being met. Options are good. And yes. uh, many different scenarios and situations that you have to fit the product to the job. I get that. Andrew, my last question is, I'd say it's super important, especially when we think about the weather and, and end of winter or in winter time, um, that, that ice melt that gets on the floor. Yes. People complain about it. It doesn't come up, it seems. Give us some tips on how to remove that. Sure. And my answer to this question might actually surprise some of the viewers um, with, you know, us being a chemical company and a chemical industry, I will tell you the best way to remove ice melt residue off the floor is using a lot of water. So ice melt, there's two basic types. Basically one of them is table salt, sodium chloride. And then you have the extreme ice melt that's made for lower temperatures, that's calcium chloride. Both of those are very soluble in water. So the key is reducing the actual physical load by either vacuuming or sweeping the floor, putting walk-off mats at your entrance. So reduce the amount that gets into your facility. And then when it's on the floor, use a product that is basically a high dilution neutral cleaner. Um, so examples from Spartan would be like a damp mop or an Exelante. And these are just basic neutral floor detergents that you can use at one to two ounces per gallon. And then you have that reservoir of water that will readily absorb and dissolve all of the residue. I have to admit, Andrew, I didn't think it was that simple. I, you know, I have a history of cleaning myself and it was always tough, but I didn't use a lot of water, I guess. Sometimes simple is the way to go. So yeah, no doubt. And sometimes, sometimes you'll hear about having to neutralize salt residue mm -hmm. or needing special chemistry. And that's just simply not the case. Salts, um, or at least the salt we're dealing with, they don't have any pH associated with them. They take on the pH or whatever solution that they come in contact with. So, yeah, it's a great tip. Appreciate that. Well, Andrew, this has been good information and thank you for your time today. I know our viewers, those watching will value a uh, few new ways, new approaches to hard for care and especially how to choose and the products that they need. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff.